to see you today. It's good to see. Glad for everyone that's viewing online. God bless you. Thanks for joining us this morning. Well, I truly do believe that God has a blessing with your name on it. Do any of you believe that this morning? I believe that because you decided to come to church to worship God, to dig into the word early on a Sunday morning, I believe that God's got a blessing for you this week. You know, how many of you know that God is worthy of all of the praise? He's worthy of all of the praise. Scripture tells us this in Philippians. It says, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about this. What you think about determines the quality and direction of your life. What you think about, what you put your mind on today determines the quality and the direction of your week. There used to be a song we used to sing that said, I woke up this morning with my mind, what? Stayed on Jesus. That's why I believe scripture encourages us to think about good things. Another translation of this scripture says, fix your mind, fix your mind. I believe that if you fix your mind today, if you lean into the word of God that God has for you today, if you lean into the music and praising God, fix your mind on God, I believe that any issue that you may have coming into this place today, God can fix it. Do I have a witness that God can fix it? Do I have a witness that God can fix it? So I wanna encourage you today to focus on your God, not your problems. Believe that he's going to do great things. And I believe that you may have been headed one direction this week, but I believe that God has a whole new direction for you this week, full of healing, full of blessing, full of promotion. Somebody needs to believe it with me this morning. That's what I'm believing for, is that God has taken me to another place. And I believe for everyone in this place today, just don't sit down in this service, but truly lean in. And I believe that God's going to be, go before you. He's going to make your crooked places straight. He's going to open doors that you didn't even see. And he's got blessings in store that you would not even believe right now. How many of you received that word this morning? Well, amen. Let us go to God in prayer. How about you just throw up your hands to the heavenlies as we get started today? Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come before your presence, Lord. We're grateful, Lord, to be in your house, Lord. We know in your house there is victory. There are miracles. There are great things that are going to happen in this day. Because this is your day, Father, Lord, as we lift you up on this Palm Sunday, Lord, entering into Holy Week, one of the most important weeks of the entire year, Lord. We honor you and thank you, Lord, for what you did for us, Lord. You are truly worthy of the praise. Today, Lord, I thank you for the faithful people of God that are here today. They've come here today with different things on their hearts, different things on their mind. But we know that nothing is too big for you, Father Lord. So we ask that you hear their cry, Lord, hear their prayers today. We pray, Lord, as the praises go up in this place, Lord, that your blessings are going to rain down all over your people on this day. We pray and believe these things in your precious name. Let all the faithful people of God shout. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise all around the sanctuary as our praise team.
she will. Oh, come on, stand on your feet and give God a great big hand praise. How many of you know that Jesus will take care of you? How many of you know that last week he took care of you? How many of you know that it's in him you live, move, and have your very existence? Hey. How many of you know that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you might have been dead and gone? How many of you know that he's a good God and he's good all the time and all the time he is good? And guess what? When I call some people, they put me on hold and they say, I'll be back with you and I'll stay on hold for hours and they'll never come back. But that's not the way it is with God. The choir said you can call him in the morning, call him in the noonday, call him at nighttime, call him when things are well, call him when you're having problems. Call him when you can go to sleep. Call him when you can't sleep at all. Call him when you got a lot of friends. Call him when nobody wants to be your friend. You can call him in the noonday. You can call him at night because he'll make everything all right. Can you give God a great big hand praise if he's made everything all right for you? We're going to enter into this moment of prayer. It's prayer time here in this in church and it's prayer time all over the land and country. It's prayer right here and right now. You know where there's much prayer, there's much power. Where there is no prayer, there is no power. And when you call on God, he gets excited for you. He wants to show you how big he is. He wants to show you how great he is. He wants to show you how marvelous he is. He wants to show you how he can hear and answer your prayers. He gets excited when you ask him for big things. Because when you ask him for big things, he gets to show off. Why does he show off? Because he doesn't just give you what you ask for but he always gives you more than you ask. He wants to show off. Say, show off. You tell him to heal your body and you'll find out that your mind gets healed also. You ask him to heal your body and you find out that your relationships are better now. He heals your body and all of a sudden your attitude gets different. He heals your body and he gives you material things to go along with that healed body because he wants to show off. So when you ask, you don't need to ask him for big things because he's a big, big God. Would you bow your heads? We're praying right now, yes, for our nation, our country. The Bible says, whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do it and I will give it to you if it's according to my will. He said, ask and ye shall find, seek and ye shall find knocking, the door will be open to you, seeking you shall find. And things will happen instantly. And sometimes they don't happen right away. Sometimes he puts you on pause and says, just hold off, I'm going to give it to you, but not quite yet. While you're bowing your heads, I want you to pray for a sick and shut-in, but uh, I was just told by our staff that Shauna Mack, Shauna just lost her cousin. She's bereaving right now. And the cousin was killed. So I don't know how that happened or whatever else, but I know that she needs our prayer, Shana and her family. Would you lift up them in prayer right now? Will you talk to God right now about Shana and her family? Ask God to give her the peace to pass all understanding. Ask God to give the Jackson family peace who lost their loved one Wanda Jackson who was a member of our church probably about 25 years she had cancer and in four months she was gone 
as the doctor has predicted. But before she left here, she came by the church. She was laughing. She was looking like a pitch of health. That's what God does. He makes you look good on the outside when you're not doing so good on the inside. She even gave her last offering, said, Pastor, here is my offering. I haven't been able to come here, but here is my offering. She wanted to make sure things was right with her and God. She knew it was right with the church. Come on, sing choir. Lord, we just thank you, God. We thank you that all things work together for good to those who love God and that are called according to his purpose. Father, today, we pray that your people here today find purpose, God. Find purpose in your love. Find purpose even in your grace and in your mercy. I pray today if there's somebody here today that needs healing, that you will heal them even in this place. If there's somebody here today who needs your deliverance, help them to know that you'll never leave them nor forsake them. Father, we're just here today to say thank you. Can somebody say thank you? Thank you, God, for just blessing us, God. Thank you, God, for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. Father, we give you the honor, we give you the glory, and we give you the praise. This is the day that you have made, so we're going to rejoice and be glad in it because you are a good God. You are a mighty God. You are a matchless Savior. You are the King of kings and the Lord of Lords. So, Father, we give you all the honor, the glory, and all the praise today. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Yeah. Come on, somebody give God some praise. Uh, yeah. Yes. Hey. Said it's good. So good. So good. Said it's working. I know it's good. It's good. My home is good. It's good. Work it. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Somebody say it like you mean it. 
you mean it's done. Said I don't look good. Hey, working in my favor. Kids K through six can exit to the right of the stage, and all middle and high school students can exit to the left of the stage. Tuesday noon live and online Bible study is back. Join Pastor Larry starting March 5th for a new Bible study series on The Best is Yet to Come. This special session is going to teach about how to find a place of safety, stability, and trust in a world gone crazy. Don't miss this series. It's going to be life-changing. The month of March is Holy Month at Mount Zion. We want everyone to participate in four things. First, join our fasting and prayer challenge. Choose something to give up so you can draw closer to God. Then join us on Palm Sunday, March 24th. We are having Good Friday on March 29th at 12 p.m. with noon prayer at a Seven Last Words gathering of worship. For one hour, join us in the sanctuary for an interactive experience commemorating the seven last words of Jesus on the cross. And then our Resurrection Easter services on March 31st. We have a special day planned for our children's church. Invite your families so they can watch the kids on screen with Easter speeches. Then after services, families can go across the street to Oakwood Park for the annual community Easter egg drop from an amazing helicopter swooping down, dropping Easter eggs with candy and even some with money. So it's going to be a day to remember. Will you commit to generosity this Easter? Each year we are working to maintain our building with upgrades, do maintenance to our prayer park and parking lot, support our outreach ministries like Human Trafficking Victims Assistance, City Mission, and Loving, as we support families struggling financially. All of this, along with our food pantry, is a part of our Hope in the Village ministry. Last year, we started our gym project for youth and children who have been using our Dream Center this past winter for youth basketball and mentoring. So on Easter Sunday, we are asking all that are willing to bring hope by giving at least $50, $100, $250, or $500 above and beyond your regular giving. If you will participate in giving hope when you give this special offering, write hope on your envelope. Thank you for being faithful to the cause. Our Connect Group ministry is ready for you. This ministry is for those that like to connect socially with like-minded people. If you are interested in the following Connect opportunities, head to the Connect desk after services. In April, there is a bowling outing being planned. This month, there is a foodie group for those who love great restaurants, a travel group where you can explore together, and we even have a group for those who want to take dance lessons. Lastly, the summer is coming and if you golf or want to head out on the green, sign up. The groups only happen if you register and participate. So if you're interested, sign up at the Connect desk or call the church. Hey everyone, it's Pastor Larry Macon Jr. and I'm just so delighted to have the opportunity to speak to you today. You know, as a leader, entrepreneur, and spiritual influencer, I'm passionate about helping others to reach their financial goals. I believe that financial freedom is within reach for everyone, and I'm here to help you make it a reality, but it starts with you. At our upcoming Freedom Conference Sunday on April 14th, we wanna share with you some tips and also some strategies for successful budgeting, saving for the future, credit repair, and creating an alternate source of income. I hope on this special day that you'll leave with a clear plan of action that you can use to make your dreams a reality. I wanna tell you on this special day, at both services, we'll have partners and vendors around to assist you, and then after our 11 a.m. service, we'll have a business brunch for you to network and receive further resources to help you on your journey in the areas of financial freedom, business, and also entrepreneurship. Also, after the brunch, we will have some workshops available with some experts so you get answers to what you're looking for right away. If you wanna join in this movement and be with us, let us know that you're attending. And if you want to be in one of our 30 to 45 minute master classes on that day, we want you to be there. Let us know. Go to the Connect Desk in the foyer or go online and just sign up 
or at mzov.org. There are four goals that I want everyone in our church to work toward these next few years. Number one, I want you to remember we want everybody in this place to own some form of tangible property, a home, or some piece of property in our country. We believe that ownership is what we need. Also, we want everyone to have a budget. Know what type of money that you bring in and how much you take out and plan your expenses so that you can make better decisions with your spending, which can also help you prepare for the future. Thirdly, this leads me to that third thing that I want everybody to remember. I want everyone to open or begin or to fund a savings account for your future or also for maybe your retirement, we call it. I call it for your financial freedom days of life and also for your future generations. Number four, we want everyone to work on an alternative source of income. If you got a job, then start a business on the side or a side job, get you a side hustle, we call it, or something to supplement your income. At the Freedom Conference, our Freedom in Life Sunday, we aim to help people learn how to take control of their life and take control of their finances. Together, we can make financial freedom a reality. I'm praying for you, I'm believing for you, and we want to anoint you in this realm of finance and business. So join with us. Remember, this is an ongoing movement of God here at Mount Zion Oakwood Village, and we're celebrating 10 years. Can you believe it? It's been 10 years since our first Freedom Conference and our first Freedom in Life movement. So this is so great, and we're, we're happy again to have you there. So be there April 14th. Put on your calendar. I want to see you there. Take care, and God bless you. Mount Zion on the move for Christ. Amen. Let's give God some praise for what he's doing here at Mount Zion. I'm going to ask if you would stand with me on your feet to and turn your Bible to the book of Malachi 3, 6 through 12. And even to those in the parking lot or if you're following us online, you can go to Malachi 3, 6 through 12. It's giving time in God's house. This is our time to give of our tithe and of our offerings, knowing that God has been good. If God has been good to you, can you say hallelujah? If God's been great to you, can you say amen? So as we give of the tithe, what are we doing? We are acknowledging God in his place in our life. I believe that when you put God first, God will do some awesome and some special things even in your life. Let's go into this text in Malachi 3, 6 through 12. We're going to read it responsibly and you can follow along. And the Bible says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say... Will a man rob God? Yet he have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let's read 12 together. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us bow our heads in a moment of thoughtfulness, thinking unto God, thanking God for all that he's done for us. You know, the tithe acknowledges when we give to God. It acknowledges God as a sovereign God. The Bible says that he is the great I am. Somebody say I am. He's a person eternal, self-sufficient, and self-contained. God has made us steward over the earth and what we and what he has given us. He's making us steward over that. And what we are, even as stewards, we're under his lordship. A steward gets to exercise the privilege of the owner, but at the end of the day, they are not the owner. We must realize that what we have and all of our resources don't belong to us, but ultimately they belong to God. You know, ironically, one of the main reasons that people say that they won't give or they won't tithe or give an offering is because they believe that if they give, they won't have enough. However, the truth of the matter is if we tithe and when we give, what happens? God gives us more than enough. The Bible says he's El Shaddai. Somebody say El Shaddai. What does that mean? That means he is the supplier. He's the one who supplies. The Bible says he's the one who supplies. He supplies an all-bountiful and all-sufficient supply for your life. 
And so when you realize that God is an owner and you're just giving back a portion back to him, what you have left will go further than if you had kept everything to yourselves. So just bow your heads right now as we talk to God. And we need to always keep our trust in the all-sufficient Father who supplies all of our needs. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We love you. We thank you, God, for supplying our needs. We thank you, God, that at the end of the day, we receive benefits when we're in covenant with you. There are benefits when we follow your word and follow your way. Thank you, God, for blessings not only seen, but we thank you for the unseen blessings. We thank you for all the things, like the Bible says, where you rebuke the devourer, those things that were set up to take us out. We are still standing because of your grace and because of your mercy. Thank you for this church and this ministry, this beautiful edifice, this beautiful campus, all the people that we're able to bring in because of the faithful people of God that choose to put you first in their life. Bless them right now in a mighty and powerful way. We give not grudgingly, but we give cheerfully. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. I'm going to ask all of those that are bringing a tithe and offering, you can come right now to the tithe and offering baskets at this time. And in the parking lot, thank you for giving even on the outside as our ushers are coming. And online, thank you for blessing the kingdom. God bless you. I want to say thank you for all. Thank you for all. God, a great big hand praise as you remain standing for just a moment, whispering a word of prayer for the man of God to preach the word of God. Pray right now, even now, even now. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing. Then the Bible says in Revelation, let those who have an ear to hear let them hear, which means that many people will not hear what I have to say today and what he has to say through me. And so therefore, they will go out without faith. If you want to increase your faith in God, then just start to opening up your ear and hearing. I share with the church today that I go to the Automobile University every day. In other words, I go to the audio inside of my car and I listen to tapes of motivation speaker, motivational speakers and preachers and sermons and teachings because I want to hear the word of God because I want to increase my faith. Someone said, well, how do I become a better Christian? How can I feel the presence of God in my life more? The Bible says faith comes by hearing. But of course you cannot hear if you do not open up your ear and focus on the word of God. We come, to, we come to church every Sunday with all kinds of other focus. We walk in the door thinking about what we're going to be 
eating and what will we, where will we be having dinner at? We come in the church worrying about how we look on the outside when God said that man looks on the outer appearance, but God looks at the heart. And so we cannot hear because we do not engage our reticular activation system that is in our brain. And the reticular activation system allows us to filter out other things and to focus, say focus. How is it that we're able to be in a crowded room with people chattering and talking and all of a sudden someone calls out our name from the other side of the room? It is because our reticular activating system in our brains filter out all the chatter and then suddenly focus in on that one voice that is calling our name out. And so what must you do on Sunday morning? You've got to try to get here just a little bit earlier so you can settle down to filter out the world, so you can sit down and meditate and to pray to God early that he might open up your ear and let your reticular activating system fu function properly by gearing out all that other stuff. You see, Satan wants you to come to church and have your mind on so many other things. But God said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, but you've got to hear. And the man of God comes as one of his shepherds to speak to one and all of his sheep inside of the church. And I don't know about you, but I'm grateful to God to be in church. I don't know how people make it without church. Come on, come on, come on, somebody. If you're with me on that. Because it's in church where I learn gratitude. I learn to say thank you, God, for another day. I, I hear what somebody say, you've been good to me and good to me all the time. And all the time, you are good to me. It's in church. Now pray one last time for me and the family and the church and your ears to be unplugged and your reticular activating system will kick in to take all that other stuff that you've been dealing with all week long. And then I want you to th begin thinking on good things. Think about how good you feel today. Think about how you feel better today right now than you felt in your life. Tell yourself that you feel good. You feel good. You feel good. Tell, tell yourself that you're thanking God that you're feeling so good, that you've got your health and your strength and you're feeling good, that your, your mind is sharp. Tell yourself your mind is sharp and tell God how much you love him because he first loved you. Tell Jesus. Can you say this after me? Say, Jesus, you love me so very much. Say, Jesus loves me. Now, you just can't say it. Say it. You got to feel it. Say, Jesus loves me. Now say it one more time and take your hands and point your hands to yourself and say, Jesus loves me. Now turn to your neighbor and say, guess what neighbor? Say, Jesus loves you. Oh my God. Can you give God a great big hand praise as you go to your seat? Amen. I don't know about you, but I feel good saying that. It makes me feel better. Amen? Jesus loves me. I keep telling people, if you want to live longer, you got to come to church. And when you come to church, you've got to express gratitude. Say gratitude. The more gratitude you express, the better you feel. The more complaining you express, the more bad you and the worse you feel. So you come to church and you don't expect nothing to happen. Guess what? Nothing happens. You come to church saying, well, the preacher ain't going to preach. Guess what? He might have preached, but you just didn't hear him. You come to church and say, hey, the choir ain't going to sing. And so you sit back and you say, well, let them sing to me. The Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Which means it's not the job of the choir to praise the Lord. It's the job of everybody, especially everybody whom God has blessed. Now, if you've had a breakthrough last week, you ought to really be praising God. Have I got a witness in the house? The Bible says, let the redeem of the Lord 
He didn't say, let the redeemer of the Lord sit so. He didn't say, let the redeemer of the Lord look around so. He didn't say, let the redeemer of the Lord criticize so. He didn't say, let the redeemer of the Lord complain so. He said, let the redeemer of the Lord whom he had brought out. If the Lord has brought you out, you ought to be shouting. You ought to be thanking God. You ought to be lifting up his holy name. You ought to be happy in the Lord. You ought to be grateful. You ought to write down some things that you're grateful about because God God has brought you from a mighty long way. You could have still been hooked up on drugs. You could have still been hooked up on violence. You still could have been hooked up on bad health. But the Lord has been a doctor in a sick room. Oh, how we forget the goodness of God. That's why I come to church on Sunday morning. I want to remind myself. I'm in my right mind. I got a reasonable portion of health and strength. I've got brothers and sisters around me who's willing to pray for me. I'm doing all right. No, I ain't doing all right. I'm doing good. Real good. I like that. You come on up here and preach right now. Real good. Can you say real good? I feel better. So much better. I laid my burden down I feel better So much better Since I laid my burden down Burden down, Lord Burden down, Lord Since I laid my burden down Burden down, Lord Friends don't treat me like they used to Since I laid my burden down Friends don't treat me like they used to Since I laid my Y'all know what? Burden down, Lord Burden down Burden down, Lord Burden down, burden down, Lord, burden down, Lord, since I laid my, you know what else? Run the It looks like you've taken a hard fall and there's an emergency call coming in. You know, when you start to singing like that, it's an emergency call. But it's not to go to the EMS. It's to reach up to heaven so that God can show up and show out. I tell you, I, I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary, wounded, and worn, but I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. Something hit me from the top of my head, went down to the sole of my feet. Burning started to reason reason on the inside, and I felt better. So much. Amen, amen. We y'all gonna keep me all day up and here, up and here, up and here. I was telling people that when you go to church, research says that you're likely to live 13.7 years longer when you are participating in church. 
13.7 years. I had a lady who died last week. We buried her. Wanda Jackson, she, she lived to be 73 years old and had a very rough life. And I told them she should have died probably about 60 years old, 60 years old with what she went through, but because she came to church and she worshiped the Lord and she praised the Lord and she sang to the Lord and she was back there as an usher just running her mouth with everybody else because they were in relationship. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, there's nothing wrong with running your mouth just as long as you run your mouth on the right stuff. And she lived to be 73 years old. Here it is. I'll put it up here. Here's what the statistics say. Research 2005. It says African Americans who participate in church or faith communities are likely to live an average of 13.7 years longer and experience and experience and experience, live longer and experience a sound mind and a good physical body affiliated with psychological and physiological health benefits. That was Mark and Davies, Davies' research in 2005, which means you ought to tell your kids they need to get their mm in back in church. Hello, somebody. If you love your husband and you want them to live longer, you ought to tell them, but well, I know you don't love them, so I understand. You say stay at home. But if you got family members, you ought to bring them to church because the research just said when they come to church, they get a shift and difference inside of their life. All of a sudden, they believe that King Jesus can roll all burdens along away. All of a sudden, they start to have gratitude in spite of what's going on around them. All of a sudden, they shut the news down and start listening more to God. Have I got a witness? They start to pray just a little bit more and he settles their body, their mind, and their situation and their condition. That's what happened. Psychologically, they're more balanced than people who don't go to church. They are all worried about who's going to be the next president. I'm not worried about who's going to be the next president. I'm always concerned and I always know that there is somebody who is sitting on the throne. The Bible says the Lord is in his holy temple. Let everybody let the earth keep silent before him he is sitting high looking low guiding our feet wherever we go and whatever his plans are he's going to handle whatever's going on down here have I got a witness in the house he ain't just a king he's a king of kings get a dictatorship and guess what there's somebody over the dictator have I got a witness? All he got to do is blow his good breath in a certain kind of way and things will settle down. If he blows the bad breath in another kind of a way, you'll see all kinds of climatic things occurring in the atmosphere. You'll see wildfires and storms and pollution coming from Canada to Cleveland, etc., etc. That ain't nothing but a God who is still in control. He works with good things and he works with the worst of things. But at the end of the day, he is a working God because God can work it out. Have I got a witness in the house? My mama used to tell me, shut up when it's starting to storm because that ain't nothing but the voice of God shattering and shouting in the atmosphere by way of thunder and thunderstorm. Whoa. He can just sh put down his foot. And when he put his foot down from heaven and reached down to earth, all of a sudden, the earth will start to quake it. And you'll have all earthquakes across the entire landscape. Oh, folks, you say he's a big God. And he hears even the whisper of the most smallest whisper. You better tell folk they better get there. Y'all know what we used to say? You better get your behind in church. Because if they want to live 13.7 more years in life, that's why our folk, at morning service, you ought to see it. We got another old folk in there. Don't look at me, please. Everybody know I'm only 62. 
She whiz. Y'all looking at me like there's something wrong with me. Yes, I want them to live, and I want y'all to live longer. See, some of y'all made it through the pandemic, caught the disease, and the only reason why you did so well is because you still sat outside coming to church. I wish I had a person who knew that there was more medicine in the hem of his garment than all of the hospitals in the world and all of the vaccines that are coming out. He does surgery without scaffolds. He doesn't have to use a knife. All he has to do is speak a word. By his stripes. By his stripes. By his stripes. I am healed. Oh, let me get to the text. Y'all just messing me up today. I'm supposed to be talking about donkeys. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's supposed to be talking about donkeys today and palm branches. All right, all right, all right, all right. Anybody got to go to dinner? Anybody got reservations anywhere? Thank you. Thank you. I just told you you need to focus. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, focus, focus, focus. Say, that's why this spirit is moving like it is, because we're starting to focus on the spirit of God. And he's starting to say things that I never knew I would be even talking about today. That's how he moves, you know. He moves. He's a, he's a wonder-working God. I don't know how he moves. I just know he moves. Faith coming by hearing. And I know some of you haven't heard a thing I said. Faith coming by calm. Say faith calms. By hearing. Hearing. And hearing the word of God. Well, let's go on to the word of God. Y'all looking at me like y'all ready to go home. Some of y'all. Two of y'all. You don't want me to look at you now. I'll punch you out. Say it, girl. My girl comes from the tradition where if she, if she starts to speak it in tongues, God's going to move in this place. My musician knows about speaking. The Bible said, let everything that got breath, and I think there's some air going through that organ. What do you think about Jesus? What do you think? about Jesus what do you think about Jesus he's oh all right every time I think about Jesus I know it ain't in tune but I know the war I know the name what do you think about
give our musician a great big hand. I, I was just, I, I was just enjoying them. And Josh was just getting down and his, right. his hair was going everywhere, which way, and he was enjoying himself. And, and he was just letting go. And, I, and then I had the cool girl. She was just, she ain't gotta have no expression because it's all in her fingertips. And the drummer just let go. Well, I guess y'all know we ain't gonna be able to preach today. So, 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 so here is gonna be the assignment. I'm gonna read the text, and 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 I said, faith cometh by what? Hearing. By hearing. So I said, I'm a part of the Automobile University. I listen to sermons and messages and motivational messages going to and from church. And when I'm coming here to church, I listen to a message. When I go home, when I'm running around the city with Mr. Macon, and I know she's going to go into the shopping center and stay all day, I start hearing the word of God. So the simple message is going to be, and I'll just read it, is the simple assignment for you is to go home, go on YouTube, listen to the first sermon on YouTube. Amen? Don't get mad at me. Y'all didn't want me to preach anyway, half of them. You don't want anybody to preach, some of you. And I want you to hear it by way of the YouTube uh, or Facebook, okay? Now, I do want you to be mindful that we are going on, uh, we're having Bible study on the first week next Wednesday, not this Wednesday, at evening time. Put that, uh, uh, that up on the uh, screen. And I want everybody to come to the Bible class. Now, I'm going to sow a seed into the Bible class myself. I'm going to find some money for Miss Making Sheen in here. I'm going to take some. Oh, yes, she is. I told her I'm going to take something out of her bank, uh, out of her bank account because I ain't got no money. And, and we're going to pay for that, that dinner that night. I want you to come because I want everybody to come who will buy families. They're families. If you don't have anybody, come by yourself. But if you have a family, I especially want single parent mothers to bring their children to this family Bible study. And I want elderly people to come. Or I want people who are extremely lonely. You don't have anyone that you're eating with and all of that. I want you to come by 630. We're going to, uh, uh, you know, have a little light meal and then we're going to do some teaching. I'm going to have fireside chats and I'm going to talk with you and tell you what thus saith the Lord. And then afterwards, we've got activities. Amen. Those ladies who want to line dance and brothers, we're going to have line dancing after a while for the family. If you want to join us or if you want to play basketball, even if you're 80 years old, you can go and play basketball afterwards. And uh, we're going to have the men here with the dads on duty. We're going to do some workshops. But we want you to come for Bible study in the evening. We're going to do it for three weeks, and then the fourth week, we're going to have Miss Macon, who's going to have the SES, Sister, Encouraging Sister, and some other activities for the family. This is the time where the pastor has to sit down and do fireside chats with what is called the destruction of the family, which is not the destruction of the family. It's really the restructuring of the family because family is no longer mother and father and all of that there. There's various kinds of families. In fact, there's grandparents' family who have to raise their grandchildren. So it's not no destruction of the, no black family. It's the restructuring of the family. And so we want you to come and join us for a Bible study. I'm going to just read this text here because I know you want to go home and eat. Me too. And plus the spirit moved, didn't it move? Yeah. Amen. It moved. If you didn't get nothing out of that, guess what? The spirit just jumped over you and went to the next person. So, so you weren't ready to hear nothing, so you haven't heard anything. But if you were like me, you heard something today. And not only did you hear something, you felt something. That was what we call the Pentecostal experience. On the day of Pentecost, the Bible says that the Peter was sitting up there speaking about Jesus. And all of a sudden, they heard something. They saw something. And after they saw something, they felt something. So I saw the experience of the movement of God in this place. Amen? Here's what it says here in the 28th verse. You can turn it to uh, your book Bible there very quickly in verse 19. He's going to put the main text up there. And then uh, I'm not going to. If y'all didn't get nothing, y'all ain't got nothing. Y'all didn't bring nothing. 
The text says in verse 28, chapter 19 out of the book of Luke, after Jesus has said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem as he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives. He sent two of his disciples saying to them, say, repeat after me, go to the village ahead of you. And as you enter it, you will find a coat tied there which no one has ever ridden. Now remember this word, untie. Say, neighbor, are you tied up? Say, neighbor, are you tied up with frustration? Tied up with anger? Tied up with a bad history? Tied up with some friends you need to be untied and loose from? Are you tied up with bad health? Then I need to tell you that Jesus can untie you. Have I got a witness in the house? He wants to untie you. Say, untie me, Lord. He wants to release you. Say, release you. He says, untie it. Say, some people are, untied, are tied up to the word can't and ain't. I can't do this. I can't go nowhere. I can't have friends. I can't live with myself. I can't get a good job. I can't write that book I've had inside of me for 30 years. I can't find a new job. Well, I need to tell you that Jesus has just walked into your I can'ts and shifted to I can. I can do all things through Christ who has strengthened me in the time of trouble. He shall hide me in his pavilion. He says, untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing, why are you untied? Let him know that the Lord has need of it. And you listen to my sermon. It's not really about it. It's about you. Because he's more interested in you than he is a donkey. Have I got a witness? He didn't say to the donkey, have dominion over the earth. He told the man or the humankind to have dominion over everything I created and not for the creation to have dominion over what I've created in you. He says those, he says in verse 37, when he came near the place where the road calls, goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd, everybody, all the disciples who were part of the kingdom of God began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Now, here's your second assignment. Listen to my message, but I want you to go home today. Write down three to th ten things that you are grateful about or for. What did I say? Tell the person next to you what I said. Write down three. When the praises go up, when the thanksgiving go up, when the hallelujahs go up. But when you write them down, it becomes more effective, but you cannot just write it down. Say, I'm not gonna just write it, but I'm gonna say them. Once I write them down, I'm gonna say them every day in the Holy Week time, these 10 things that I'm grateful for. Did you get it? And why must you say them? Because they are not empowering until you say it. The Bible says there is life and death in the power of the tongue. So if you want to get up and be empowered, just don't say nothing. But if you want to be empowered in the morning, just start to thanking God for the things that are around you. No matter how big they are or how small they are, if it ain't nothing but a picture, say, God, I thank you. You sent me over there to Walmart and I found that picture. I thank you, God, for this little cup that I have. I love the color of the cup. Look around at your living room set and say, God, I got it on sale, but it sold me when I saw it. You start to thanking him for your family and your friend. I'm grateful that I was sick some time ago and you healed my body. I didn't believe it was going to happen, but you made a way out of no way and I'm just writing it down. God, 
I thank you for healing my body. I didn't have a job, but you know you found me the right job on time. I ain't making a lot of money, but I love what I'm doing. Have I got a witness in the house? I'm grateful. Say grateful. Write it down and then say it because life and death is in the power of the tongue. The reason why you ain't going nowhere because you ain't saying nothing. You want a house? Don't say, oh, it's in my mind. Put it in your mouth. Listen, God, I want this house. I want you to find it for me. I want to go to it because whether you know it or not, your reticular uh, activating system, what I talked about this morning, is just like when you, when, you, when you go to a parking lot and you lost your car. Guess how you find your car? Your RAC kicks in and it filters out all the other cars around you and suddenly you start to go right back directly to your car. That's how your brain works. Say, that's brain power. So you can't say some bad stuff. You know, when you tell somebody they make you sick, guess what? Keep on telling them that. And you gonna be sick. Have I got a witness? But if you say, there's some good in all of us and, some, and the worst also, in, but no, they're good in all of us. See how that begins to affect you. Here, what did they do? They started thanking God with a loud voice for all the miracles they had seen. Write them down. What do they say? Say, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace. God knows I need that. Say, peace in heaven. Why do I want it in heaven? Because everything started in the unseen, in the heaven, and God brought it down uh, to the seen world. And everything that you want is already out there, up there in the unseen world, in the heavens, in the spiritual world. The truth of the matter is, you didn't come here uh, when somebody said, where you come from? You say, well, I come from Alabama. I come from Mississippi. I come from Tennessee. You ain't come from heaven. No, no. Not, the, the body may have come from heaven, but at the end of the day, it could not be a body unless there was a spirit first. And folks, So God gave you a spirit first, and the spirit existed first in the spiritual world up top there with God. And so God kind of blew you out of the spiritual world into the physical world by way of birth and so you might have been born in a certain city but 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 he's trying to get you back to the city that you originated from by being born again oh I, I wouldn't know my paper to preach but I said it anyway peace in heaven and glory glory in the highest some of the Pharisees in the crowd, some of the Pharisees at Mount Zion, some of the Pharisees that were sitting beside me said to Jesus, teacher, rebuke your disciple. And he said, I tell you the truth, if they keep that quiet, if I don't praise God, if I don't shout to God, if I don't thank God, if I don't say hallelujah, if I don't give God gratitude, then the very rocks, because God will not be without a witness. And if you don't believe that, you should have heard your musicians earlier. They were shouting over there at the good. Come on, stand on your feet. I took too much of your time. I had a good sermon this morning. Y'all should have heard me. Oh, it was a good sermon. It was a great sermon. Turn to your neighbor and just whisper to him. Say, Pastor, really preach a good sermon today. Oh, no, no. Turn to your neighbor. Don't worry about giving them no disease. The Bible says God eliminated diseases. Inside the church, you don't get no diseases. But you should have heard that sermon. It's going to bless your heart. And guess what? It's so bad. It's too bad you couldn't hear it in the 11 o'clock. So you got your assignment. Go home. Listen to the sermon. Go home. Write three to ten things you are grateful to God about. And every day, starting Monday through Saturday and even Sunday, I want you to read it out loud to yourself and watch what happens to your day. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this moment that you've allowed us to be in this place. We thank you for this marvelous experience. We know, God, that you have come to us by way of God the Father, and so therefore you are concerned with us and you take care of all of your children all of the time. We thank you, God, that you've come to us by way of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and so you have died on Calvary. You've given your life and was resurrected from the grave and we're grateful for the mighty works of God through the Son of God that saved us from our sins and now God we thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit that pervaded this place that we felt 
through the shout, through the response. You have activated us in a different kind of a way today, and you have spoken, and therefore we need not say another word because all that you wanted us to hear was already said. God, we thank you that there were some people who opened up their ears that they might hear. And Father, remind us as we listen to the, the sermon and other messages, motivational speeches, etc., that you will open up here because you said, Faith cometh by hearing, and for the next seven days, I want these who are inside of the church, those who are looking at us online, those who are in the car, I want them to hear. Faith cometh by hearing, so that when they come in next Sunday, and thank you for rising from the grave with all power in heaven and earth in your, in, is in your hand, that when they hear Pastor Dan, Pastor Larry preach, the word of God, they'll say in advance, hey, this is too much for us to believe, but we believe and our faith has been increased. In Jesus' name, we pray and all the people of God shouted amen. Give God a great big hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, we had church today and consider yourself dismissed for now. <laughs>